Light is the brushes and the palette that we paint with as photographers. So it's certainly one of the most important elements in good photography. But what we're gonna talk about here is how good photographers learn to observe how light impacts and interacts with all different types of subjects. Let's start with the fact that there is no picture without light. We can't take pictures in total, total darkness. The right kind of light can really enhance a subject. It can show us detail and sometimes even give us a sense of surface texture on what it is we're photographing. Good photographers have trained themselves to not only look at a scene or a subject, but to look at the light hitting it and to recognize the opportunities that it presents. Let's talk for a moment about natural light and the varieties of natural light that we work with. These can range from bright sunlight on a clear day to dark overcast skies or the sky after the sun is set at dusk or before the sun rises at dawn. It can be window light coming in into a room uh, during the daytime. We can't move the sun or the clouds. We can't control them. But there are a couple of things that we can do. First and foremost, we can see, we can train our eyes to look at and to understand how they interact with our subjects and how to take best advantage of them. There are obviously many, many different types of artificial light sources. These can range from candlelight to office type lighting or even stadium or arena lighting. One of the first things I'd like to say about artificial light is with today's digital cameras, don't be afraid to take pictures even without flash at night or in low light conditions. It's amazing what our digital cameras today can capture. But again, there are huge varieties of effects that we can get with artificial light. And understand that one of those is color and how that impacts what we call white balance. Different types of artificial lights from household lamps to fluorescent office lights and so on have different types of color. And in particular, this has a big impact on skin tones. We can often accept shifts in color and a little bit of a color mismatch with inanimate subjects or something like that. But when it comes to skin tones, we usually want the color to look pleasant and fairly natural. So that's an important thing to just keep in mind when you're about to take a picture in artificial lighting, especially if it's a picture of a person, is how is the color of this light going to impact my skin tones? And am I gonna be able to control my white balance enough to get the look I want? A huge thing when we talk about light in general is the direction of that light. How is it hitting our subject? Where is it coming from? The direction of the light is going to define the form the detail and the texture on our subject. The direction of light matters. It's an important, important thing. And again, good photographers have trained themselves to not just look at how much light is hitting their subject or even what color that light is, but from where it's coming. It makes a huge difference whether that light is coming from directly overhead, sort of from the side, low from the side, and so on. There's no one right way to photograph. There's no one right type of light, but understand that they're all different and they present us with different opportunities and different challenges. Think for a moment about the snapshots that we've all seen since the time we were children with a flash on the camera. That's flat lighting with a light shining right into the subject. It doesn't give us any shadows and it tends to be a very unnatural kind of look. We don't normally see light in real life that looks like a flash on the camera does. But whether we're talking natural or artificial light, it's, we have to look at how that light's illuminating important parts of the scene. As we said, you can't move the sun or the clouds, but that doesn't mean you're powerless to get a good picture regardless of the light. You can move your subjects. For instance, you can move a subject from bright sun into shade. You can turn your subjects around. You can move your camera position. If you were using artificial lights, you can sometimes move them to get a better direction and quality of light. When we're talking natural light, time of day is such a vital thing. 
you'll hear experienced photographers talk over and over again about how shooting in bright sun at high noon is usually not the recipe for great pictures. Even though there's lots of light, it's not always the right kind of light. The shadows tend to look very harsh and those over, being directly overhead, the direction of those shadows tends to just not be that good. Photographers usually love shooting early in the morning or late in the afternoon when we have sunlight. The character of early morning sun or late afternoon sun is something that photographers usually regard very, very favorably. It's got a different look. It's got a warmer kind of golden color to it most of the time. The way that the light comes in at a low angle tends to do a better job of illuminating subjects, and they can range from human faces to buildings or a variety of other things. Again, we can't control the light. We can't move the sun, but we can learn to work with it and take advantage of it when it really is working for us.